should say. Kilyu's family started fighting among themselves. They didn't modernize. Shade's question is right on target. George C. Tillyu had lifted Coney Island to global fame through the force of his own personality. When he died in 1914, the spark of genius was gone. Although Steeplechase remained in the Tillyu family, none of them possessed his electric ability to make Steeplechase shine. Well, that's what happened socially, but I want to know what happened to all that marvelous stuff. Where did it go? You know, this park was just torn down like an old warehouse. It was scattered to the winds, and very little of it survives today. I asked him if he knows about the guy who supposedly took our lion from Steeplechase, Fred Freed. Yes, he was an advertising guy who got interested in Coney very early and saved a huge amount of material. Did you ever hear of Fred Freed collecting a huge lion sculpture from here? Gee, you know, Steeplechase was sort of like a magic zoo. It was full of carvings of wonderful creatures ranging from dragons to unicorns and plenty of lions. But whether he ever got any particular lion, I haven't heard of that. It doesn't seem as if we're getting anywhere. But then Richard tells us that the park had a legendary gatekeeper and custodian, a man who knew all the ins and outs at Steeplechase. A man named Jimmy Honorato managed the park for the Tillyus for 40 years. And he kept a daily diary amazingly full. It has been published. If you can track that down, I think it'd be an awful good place to look. OK, great. Thanks for the lead. You're certainly welcome. <laughs> Thank you, Richard. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Well, good luck. I hope you catch your lion. <laughs> Thanks. OK. We've come to the New York Public Library, where an impressive lion also stands guard. Look at this lion. This is the kind of lion I'd expect to see in front of a major public institution at the turn of the last century. He was regal and calm. This is a lion protecting knowledge and power. <laughs> Pretty different from our lion, right? It's very different. Look at the paws. These paws are not curved. They're more... <laughs> That's right. This is a lion who's in charge of things. He's not attacking. Oh, let's go inside. I can't wait to show you. Okay. This is one of my favorite buildings in the whole world. Really? Oh, you're gonna love it. The library's Milstein division has the full collection of Jimmy Onorato's steeplechase journals. Hopefully, we'll find an answer about Fred Freed and our lion. So let's see. Steeplechase Park, the diary of James J. Onorato. Well, these seem to be in chronological order, so I guess we could just find the time that Steeplechase shut down. Here it is, Steeplechase Park sale and closure, 1965 okay. to 1966. Okay, this may have it. <laughs> Honorato was a confidant of the Tillyu family, the very soul of Steeplechase. He oversaw every detail of the park's maintenance for nearly 40 years until it closed in 1964. If anybody knew about our lion, it would have been him cut firewood on our bandsaw for the last time. Wow. I mean, he must have been really sad about Steeplechase shutting down. I think so. Daily report of sales of rides and equipment. Okay. This may be it, okay. Ferris oh. wheel, roundup. Ferris wheel sold for $8,000. And it says who it was sold to. Okay, let's see. May 14, 65, Frederick Freed, lion. So here's our lion. Well, it may not be our lion, but we know he at least bought a lion. That's a good start. Remember, Richard Snow told us the park was crammed with ornamental animals, and there's no further information listed here. Did our lion guard the entrance to Steeplechase Park? We're at the Brooklyn Museum to meet Charles Denson, author of Coney Island, Lost and Found. Like Sade, he grew up in Brooklyn, indeed at Coney Island. And as a child, he also had a passion for taking pictures. So, I mean, how was Coney Island like for you when you were a child? Well, Sade, it was the greatest place in the world to grow up. We had the entire amusement area as our playground, and a lot of it was filled with mystery. And when I was your age, I was always trying to solve these mysteries. And one of the things I did was to start documenting what I saw in the neighborhood, the changes and as things were demolished. And I would take pictures, and that's how I got started documenting Coney Island. 
It's one of the photographs I took when I was 12 years old. What he shows us is certainly going to interest Jim. I tell Jim we got a picture from Charles Denson that finally answers his question. Actually, here's a picture of the lion right in front of Steeplechase Park. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's great. That's the solid proof. But that's not all there is to the story. Charles told us that before it graced Steeplechase Park's entrance, our lion had quite a history, beginning not in Coney Island, Brooklyn, but in Imperial Germany as a plaything of the Kaiser. It was part of the El Dorado Carousel, which was the most magnificent ride ever built. It was built by Hugo Haas of Leipzig, Germany, and he built it for the Emperor of Germany. Now, the carousel itself was 40 feet tall, as tall as a four-story four building, and it had three tiers, each moving at a different speed. You can see that it has Roman warriors and peacocks and all sorts of figures. It's very elaborate. But the crowning glory of this pavilion was the golden chariot up on the top. And pulling that chariot are three large lions. And that's where your lion came from. There they are. Wow. We tell Jim that the carousel came to Coney Island from Germany around 1910 to Dreamland Park, but barely escaped a huge fire just a year later. Ever the opportunist, George C. Tillieu bought the carousel and placed the lions over the entrance to Steeplechase Park, where they greeted visitors for the next 40 years. That's great. And in fact, that's the type of drama that you'd expect George C. Tillieu to have created at the entrance to Steeplechase. Well, that's a great story. I didn't expect it to unfold that way. And it's wonderful. This goes from Europe to the United States, from an elaborate upper-class carousel to the entrance to good old Steeplechase Park. Well, I've got one more surprise for both of you, but you'll have to come with me someplace. Are you ready? Yes. <laughs> I have a surprise for Sade and Jim. I got a tip from Charles Denson at the Brooklyn Museum. Okay, now, take a look around. Look over that way. Look, look, Sade. Oh, my God! So that sad. is the other lion from the entrance to Steeplechase Park. Fred Freed donated one of them to the Brooklyn Museum, and he kept the other. And, Jim, your paws are all that's left. It's really, it's so spectacular. And it looks so much better in person. Yeah, it's, wow. That's great. It's got such life. It's better than in the photographs. <laughs> I mean, you feel it. <laughs>